Hey, this is John from Alloy211. Today's video is about the Colt Police Positive Detective Special. Which that is a long damn name for a revolver. Um, but it's that's what they call it. And in a moment, I mean, I'll kind of explain why it's called that. This gun was based off of the Police Positive, which itself was based off of the new police model, which came out in the early 20th century. In 1907, they added a hammer blocking safety, which is this part right here. Right here. Get it up into the camera so you can see it. And it slides. Maybe I can zoom in here. Let's, let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, that'll work. Slides right into this channel here, and it's what blocks the hammer. So unless the trigger is being pulled, it can't fire. So that was a good improvement in 1907. The gun itself, the... Detective Special was introduced in 1927. When it was first introduced, it only came with a snub nose 2 inch barrel. And that's where its name comes from, as it is intended for detectives, plainclothes officers, or uh, say bankers, or someone else that would tend to carry a concealed weapon rather than a full size service arm. You know, so you'd have the same powerful 38 Special cartridge, but the short barrel. And thus the detective special, detective special. You know, it's marketing. It's marketing. Um, there are a lot of, I mean, it's pretty fitting to the market that they want to attract it to. But you look at a lot of early 20th century uh, handguns, especially the cheaper end. Not that the cold is a cheaper end. This is a high quality firearm. But the cheaper end, say your Hopkins and Allens, and they'll have some strange names. Anyway, that's not the point. That's not, that's not the point. Um, the first series ran from 1927 until 1947. Uh, they only offered the 2-inch barrel in that series. Second series ran from 1947 to 1972. And then the kind of third series ran from 72 to 86. And then after Colt declared bankruptcy in 1992 and 1993, they brought this gun back until 1995. So there are a couple different generations of this firearm. In many ways, they're generally the same with just small differences between them. Uh, I haven't seen any newer ones. Uh, this gun itself was made in the 60s. One of the ways you can tell that actually is because in the 60s they shortened the actual frame to be closer to the other snub nose uh, revolvers that they're making at the time. So they shortened the actual frame of the firearm but they didn't actually shorten the grip because they... Let's see if I can get the light here. There we go they extended the bottom of the grip down past the actual metal frame of the gun. So it actually maintained the same grip length with a smaller frame. Um, but there are changes throughout the generations of the firearm. When I get this thing put back together, you'll see that the action actually looks like what, well, it looks like a modification of the Galand de Guerre, which was a late 19th century revolver, which was really ahead of its time and although I particularly don't care for this double action setup because I think that over time some of the bearing surfaces are bound to fail and actually when I received this firearm it had a part that had worn out and the cylinder was locked up and until you change that part it would not function so and it's really something that when you look at it it's like man that is a very small bearing surface and it seems like over time that thing would fail and that's what happened on this particular gun. Um, but if you watch CN Arsenal, and that's how I, I found out about this, because I watch CN Arsenal. It's a great firearms channel. And if you don't watch it, which I imagine you probably do if you're watching my channel, my little tiny channel, hopefully you've watched a much bigger channel like CN Arsenal, because they've got a lot of great information. They really get down into the minutia, not only of the design, but kind of the politics about how the design came to be. I mean, it's just a great resource on YouTube for this sort of information. And like I said, that's where I learned about the Galand de Guerre. Um, before that, I didn't really know much about it. Anyway, back to the point. Um, when and, and one of the reasons why I want to do this video is because I had the opportunity, because I was working on the gun anyway, and because I'd done that Taurus Model 82 video, which is a Smith & Wesson, design basically and I thought it was a good comparison between the way a Colt functions and the way a Smith & Wesson say K-frame functions and all in all although I really hate the way the paw is for the uh, action and I don't and that's why I'm not doing a 
side to side comparison with say this side plate open and the side plate on the Taurus open because that thing is such a pain in the ass to get back into place I don't even want to deal with it so I mean if people down in the comments say hey I really want to see a comparison of those two side plates off at the same time so I can see the difference in the way the actions work then you know what I'll make that video but like I said since it's such a just pain in the butt to get that little thing back in there I'm not going to do it unless people say they want me to so anyway like I said I just see some I just don't see this as a dur as durable of a design and although it is lighter weight um, I kind of rather have the heft of the Smith & Wesson design anyway let's go ahead and maybe start putting it back together hopefully it goes back together smoothly I should I mean I've had it together and apart a few times um, I'm going to go ahead and oil these parts lightly just because this gun is probably not going to be shot a lot and it's mostly going to just be sitting so I want to make sure that it has a thin coating of oil on the parts just to help inhibit rust if this firearm were going to be shot more or a lot I mean you don't really want to get too much oil in the action because you don't want to trap dirt in the action but for a gun that's going to sit for the most part I like to put a little coating on there so that way it uh, so that way I can just drop a spring which is then really hard to see because it's a tiny little spring anyway so that way you don't have to worry about the internals rusting up now this is the bolt catch oh, look at that spring still in it which you have to I'm gonna zoom in here which goes down in here oh well maybe I'll do tip that up down in there like that and the front of it oh now we're out of focus <laughs> I'll get it figured out here there we go the front of it not quite camera thought doesn't know what to do move it back further there you go the front of it goes up through that slot right there and then you have let me get this back into or you can see it. You have this little spring that goes up into a small little small where the hell there you go, that's too close. Let me zoom out. There we go. Goes into small little hole. Get that back on the camera. There you go. Right there. Just right in there. Just like that. And then if you look, you can see right there by where my finger in that shadow is, is where it goes into the frame. And then it's got a collared screw that goes in there. Now, you don't want to do that because that thing is not going to want to work. <laughs> you know, and this, this is one of, the, one of the things when you decide to do this on camera. It can be a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt. It's funny because in real life I tend to swear quite often but because I don't think that's necessarily appropriate. Now see I'm, I'm going to use the screwdriver just to scoot this up into place. How about I watch what I'm doing? Get the front of that in there. Okay now I'm just going to compress this and get it in there without bending it. You don't want to bend your springs. It's bad to bend your springs. Okay now that's in there. That's the first part that I'm going to put in there. And then I need to put the screw in for it. You know, sometimes, and this is that, oh, zoom back out again. This is that collared screw. Goes in there. Ooh, try to get it on camera. See that? It's not going to focus on it because it says you suck. Um, but you can tell, even there out of focus, it's a collared screw. Get back down on the gun. It just goes, oh, there you go, move it right out of the way. Just goes right in there. And you have to kind of push this over and into place. And you're pushing against spring pressure. So you're not going to really be able to see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm probably going to be in the way. Oh, sh And see, there, there's a problem with using a magnetic tip screwdriver. Because, guess what, that frame, that's a steel frame. I didn't mention that earlier, but I'm going to mention it now. Okay, now, 
This is so frustrating. And don't worry, I mean, even when I'm not doing this on camera, it's not the easiest thing to do. Okay. And I want to use the magnetic tip because it helps keep the screw in place. And since I have to put pressure on it, there we go. Oh, I thought I had it. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> the one thing I really hope there is that uh, you find that as amusing as I do because... I find it funny. Not like haha -ha funny, like oh my you know you've screwed this up so many times. Hopefully it's at least funny. But there we go, and as always with these screws, you don't want to over tighten. Just get it tight. And oh, oh there we go. In place. Yeah. So that's Part one down. There you go. Just like I said, make sure it's tight, not over tight. Next part to go in, I'm gonna zoom back out. I guess I don't need to say that because that's kind of lame. Is actually the trigger and this little stirrup that fits, or not stirrup, this little bracket that hooks onto the hammer. Right here, it's got a little stud. Let's see if I can get that. Just a little stud right there and that watching I'll probably put this on backwards goes on there and then the hammer block has a little stud right there oh almost got it gotta adjust things now there we go there's a little stud there that you can see and that slides just right up in here and as you can see it's got a wider bottom then the slot at the top, so it just slides in. Let's see if I did this right. I bet you I didn't. I don't think I did. I think I put it on backwards. <laughs> well, you know. Okay. And then that. Let's zoom in a little bit. Your trigger just goes down onto this pin. This uh, goes around the hammer pin. And... Just slides down into place. That goes in its track. And then that's how that moves. See? Pulls it down. Just like that. And that I think that is a neat way to do it. It's definitely a lot more positive way to do it than say on that on the Taurus. But it's it's the other bearing surfaces that bother me more. So I mean, yeah, this is this is okay. Um this is good actually. But you know, still. That's not as important to me as the function of the firearm. Anyway, um, oh, then we have the cylinder lock pin. Alright. I am just having a terrible day with the focus. I can hear it. It's trying. But anyway, it's right there. It slides right into this hole right here just like that and you want to make sure to put that in because if you put the other parts in before you put that in you can't put it in you have to take them back out don't ask me how I might know that of course I guess you can't ask me I guess you could ask me in the comments but that would be kind of a lame thing to ask I think I mean not really I mean anything if you want to ask it's fine I'm not gonna think it's lame I like it in comments anyway then uh, Go ahead and put the trigger assembly back in. Like Sue, maybe? Not really. Should have done. Should have done this. There we go. Now it's back in there. And again, you know, when you're doing things upside down, it does add a certain level of uh, complexity. Anyway, I'll show you the part that I. that was in the gun is this part right here. I guess I should have shown it to you when it was out of the gun. It would have been probably better. The, the other part that it interacts with. But it's just this little tiny this little tiny ledge right here. Right there. Which you can see is rounded over and isn't really flat anymore. And it interacts with let's see if I can get up here. Like I said I should have shown this to you before I put the gun together. But it interacts with this 
end of the uh, cylinder stop right there. <clears throat> and if it's not interacting with it correctly, it locks up the cylinder so it won't move and the gun won't function. So, like I said, this one was... You know, I got it to focus on that really nice for like two minutes. Oh, maybe. And then bring it back. Oh. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Um, like I said, it's just worn out and wasn't catching it properly anymore, so it wouldn't unlock the cylinder, rendering the gun just totally uh, non-functional. Just, uh, just basically a heavy thing you could hit someone with. I mean, you could fire one round, but at that point it's a single shot, and you'd probably be better just to club them with it and keep the one round for if that failed. Um, as well as, well, I'll show you the new part. Um, as you can see, it's got a much flatter surface. It's got a lot more meat to it. You know, it's it's much in much better condition than this one, side by side. Although that light kind of blurs one of them out. But as you can see, there's a lot more meat there. And I bought this from Numerich Gun Parts, which they did not have new ones of these. And I was kind of surprised given how many of these revolvers were made. Um, how few parts they really had. Because they've made a lot of these revolvers um, over time. So I was kind of surprised and that you can't you can't do that that way. <laughs> Gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, and I don't think I even showed you. See now I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put this bar back in here which interacts with the bottom of the bolt catch. It just sits right here. Let me get this all in place. Feel. There we go. That's, that's like that doesn't seem right, but there we go. Okay, and that's how that goes. And it's actually worked by the paw that rotates the cylinder, which goes in right here, not right there, right there. There we go. And that's now in place. Now the one thing you want to make sure of is that you get that get the light back on it again. You get that down underneath, you want to get that right into that spot there in the ratchet. You can see the bar sits in there and that's how that rides up and down when you pull the trigger. See, well that's not going to work because that is out of place. Oh yeah, that's good. You couldn't even see it. Well, there you go. That's how that works. So that moves that up. Nothing's under spring tension, so nothing's going to work quite right now. But it's there. The pieces are there. And like I said, if you look at this uh, design, and then you say go watch a CN Arsenal video uh, that has a Galan de Guerre on it, you'll see that this looks exactly like it. So, nothing really original there, but it does work. I just don't think it really is that durable. Um, now I'm going to put the mainspring back in, which... Um, it's not that complicated. I'm going to make it look just horrific, probably. Hopefully not. I'm going to jam my finger beside the spring and the frame in there. And then you just have to rotate that around there. It's actually a pretty simple mechanism. See, it just fits right on there. And it really is pretty easy to do. I think. I think it's pretty easy to do. Okay, and then you have... Oh, your, let me zoom back out. You have your side plate and your cylinder uh, latch goes in that, just right there. Also it has a spring with a plunger. Plunger. See the plunger there? Plunger goes out, which would make sense, but you know. And then that just plunger, latch, that just goes in there, and then you can put, make sure that, you want to make sure that this pin, the actual uh, cylinder latch pin, make that sure that's in the right place, so that's really frustrating trying to put this side plate back on. Anyway, go ahead and Set your side plate on, trying to do it right. There you go. That's on there now. 
I'm going to go ahead and put the cylinder on. Just pull it back. I didn't take the cylinder apart because it didn't really want to come apart. And since there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, anyway, I need to kind of show you what I'm doing, I guess. Kind of zoom in. Um, since there was nothing wrong with the cylinder, I really didn't want to take it apart because it didn't really seem like it wanted to come apart. Anyway, that just slides right on there. You probably didn't even see it. Pull this out. Put it in the cylinder access pin, cylinder pin, whatever, swing arm hole, pin hole. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, it's got, it's held in place with uh, a spring and a little cap on the spring and then a cupped screw that goes on this side. It's a pretty neat design. I mean, I guess it's it's neat. You know, there, there are certain little fiddly bits that this doesn't have that the Smith & Wesson design does have. Uh, definitely more small springs and such, but uh, all in all, I just don't see I don't see this design being as, and that, that screw just goes right in there. I don't see this design being as uh, durable. Let me use my other screwdriver. And there we go. It's in there. There we go. Got to go ahead and put the screws. Oh, <laughs> hey, this would have been bad. I uh, almost left the pin out of this thing right here, which is important. And it's going to be harder to get in now that I have the mainspring in, but I think I can do it. See, though, you never want to leave a pin in your workplace, in your workspace. Because, you know, that pin probably goes in something. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez, what have you done? I can't believe you do this. <laughs> oh, I think I'm gonna take the spring out. I think I'm gonna take the spring out. You know, it's funny, I haven't done this uh, before this point, so that's a good thing to do now. Let's go ahead and take this one. <laughs> Swing the cylinder. Go ahead and take that cylinder I just spent time putting back on. Take it back off. Or maybe I should take the side plate off first. Go ahead and do that. I guess I really don't have to take the cylinder. I just need to take the spring out. And you know, that's something too. I, I could have cut the camera and said, oh, I'll be back. And sometimes I do have to do that. But generally, if I screw something up like that, I, I want you to see it. Because, hey, guess what? We all screw things up. We all do things at times that maybe don't work out the best like that. And it's better to show, hey, it takes a minute, you take it apart, you put it back together. Because again, it's not that bad. It could be worse. I mean, what if I forgot to put the uh, part in the back? That would be that would be much worse. And like I said, this, this portion of it, getting the mainspring in and out, is really not that difficult. It's actually much easier to do on this than some of the fiddly springs inside that torus. So, I mean, this is kind of fiddly, and I'm making it look a lot more fiddly than I should be. There we go. And, but really, once you get it, or I'm not making it look like that, because I don't think you can see it. Sorry, sometimes when I'm looking down at it, I don't look up and see what's going on. Well, go wide. That'll help. Anyway, go ahead and put the side plate back on. Again, making sure that the latch is in the right place. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, I talked about how, oh, this isn't, these aren't that complicated. Don't, and now I'm making it look like, oh, this is really difficult. But I'm going to tell you, really, that's a lot more because I'm doing this on camera. I've got multiple things to pay attention to. See? Functions just fine, although you need to be careful if you're doing that without the side plate screws in. Which you have one here, and one here. 
which you can't see because my hands are in the way. So, one here and one here. Let's go ahead and screw these in place. Yeah, you want to be careful not to scratch the finish or over tighten them. You know, I've, if you've watched any of my other videos, you've heard me go on about not over tightening screws. Because once you round them over, they're rounded over, and then they don't want to come out or go back in right. And if they can't come out, then you can't replace them with ones you haven't screwed up. So you definitely don't want to screw them up so badly that you can't replace them. I mean, unless you want new screws. I mean, that would be, I guess, a reason. Because, you know, some people need to justify purchases. Uh, the grips just go on, like any other grip. You have a little pin here, a little hole there, just pretty standard revolver grips. Go on like any other revolver grip. There you go. And as always, um, especially, you don't ever want to over tighten grip screws. It's really easy to strip a grip screw nut out of the other uh, grip, especially wood grips. So you only ever want to get them just tight enough. And there we go. Fully functional Colt Police Positive. Went from a pile of parts sitting here. Of course, you know, then I obviously screwed some things up there. Wasn't that cool. Um, anyway, you'll notice on the Colt, the latch for the cylinder is different. Pulls back instead of pushes forward like on the Taurus, which I had waiting in the wings. Just to do a little visual comparison. You know, they're very similar in size. Um, the Taurus is heavier, a little bit different grip shape, uh, generally feels more robust. I like the push forward button for that a lot better than the pull back latch, but it, you can be quick with it. You can be. I know I've seen videos of people that are. Um, overall, they're both quality firearms. I just don't feel like the mechanism in the Colt is made for the long haul. I don't think that this thing's going to shoot thousands of rounds before that same part doesn't wear out or the other part um, the bolt latch or that bar one of them's gonna wear out and so if I were gonna buy a gun to just shoot a bunch it'd be the well, this Taurus but really a Smith & Wesson because although this Taurus is good yeah maybe a Smith & Wesson might be better anyway I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you did go ahead and hit the like button um, if you want to check out some of my other videos Check out some of my other videos, and if you like those too, go ahead and subscribe. Um, again, if people really want to see a comparison between this one with the side plate off and this one with the side plate off, I'll do it, but I don't really want to do it unless people really want to see it, because like I said, it's a pain in the butt. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope uh, you have a good day, good night, and see you later.